Now, the MHRA has uh, the Medicines and Healthcare um, Products Regulatory Agency has released safety guidelines for magnetic resonance imaging equipment in clinical use. So this is the um, most recent document that I put on the left here, and I'll share a link to that in the part one group as well. So what does the document tell us about? The document summarizes exposure limits for patients in electromagnetic fields, guidance on setting up a safe working environment in high magnetic field areas, how to set up a controlled access area, designation of staff who are involved with MR and their training requirements. The document also summarizes the use of a checklist for those who enter the high magnetic field environment, writing local rules detailing safe working practices, the safety of different types of medical implant, procedures in the event of emergency situation. So let's first of all go through what a controlled area is. Uh, so a controlled, um, yeah. So a controlled area is set up to contain the static magnetic field at the five gauze level, known as the five gauze line. So this line contains the MR environment where the MRI scanner is located. Uh, outside the five gauze line is the boundary, which is considered safe for people with implants. Um, the volume within the three empty magnetic field contour is known as the MR projectile zone. So access to the controlled area should be by the minimum number of self-closing and self-locking doors, with the code only being given to MR authorized staff. So you can see um, which are the self-closing and self-locking doors in the diagram. And there's uh, two in this case. So other measures that can be taken to prevent these uh, hazards from happening. Patients and non-MR authorized staff must be screened using a safety checklist and all potential missiles must be removed before they enter the controlled area. They must always be supervised by an MR authorized staff member whilst in the area. Detectors can also be mounted on the walls on either side of the door to the MR environment. Warning signs must be posted in appropriate places. So the warning signs that we're talking about are posted on the right-hand side here. So uh, warning signs for strong magnetic field, for non-ionizing radiation, for no authorized entry, uh, a sign saying persons fitted with heart pacemakers must not enter, and that ear protection must be worn when the unit is operated. Uh, what are the staff roles that come into play when we're talking about uh, MR safety. So first and foremost is the employer. The employer has ultimate responsibility for health and safety. MRI equipment, its location and its use, the subjects imaged, and all staff who have access to the MR unit. So the employer is responsible for all of these. MR responsible person. Uh, the MR responsible person is responsible for day-to-day -day responsibilities. They must be a senior member of the staff, and they should have a wide-ranging knowledge, understanding, and skills in MRI safety matters. The MR safety expert provides scientific advice to the MR responsible person. They're usually a medical physicist, and they should con contribute to the development of general safety procedures and advise on the risk with individual examinations and their mitigation. MR authorized person should be a suitable trained person is authorized by the MR responsible person to enter, enter the controlled area. The authorized person, uh, so the, there's a few different categories of authorized person. The first is an authorized person who um, is authorized really for the non-MR environment, may not enter the ACI zone for unsupervised. There's another authorized person who may enter the MR environment unsupervised. There's an authorized person supervisor who may enter and supervise others in the MR environment. The MR operator uh, is an MR authorized person who is also entitled to operate the MRI equipment. So this may be a radiographer, a radiologist, a medical physicist, or service engineer. Safety checklists. Uh, so there's no standard checklist available yet. Uh, the purpose of the checklist is to sift out patients and staff who are contraindicated for exposure to the various electromagnetic fields generated by MR systems. The checklist should be signed and dated. Uh, it should be countersigned by an MR by the patient when they fill it out. It should be countersigned by an MR authorized person. 
And if the patient is unresponsive or not of sound mind, other means of obtaining the information should be used. The MR responsible person should ensure a complete set of local rules for MRI safety is written. The rules should be prepared in consultation with the MR safety expert and representatives of the MR authorized personnel. They should be reviewed and updated at regular intervals and after significant changes of equipment. A typical set of lo local rules would contain uh, a list of personnel and their responsibilities. The classification of areas, um, a means of restricting access of people and equipment, contingency plans for emergencies, and information for pregnant staff. Let's uh, continue discussing this without the PowerPoint. So some more factors of interest that we uh, need to go through include, just give me one second where I pull up my slides. Uh, include uh, the MHRA recommendations for people with implanted medical devices. So, yeah. So the employer uh, should develop and implement local policies for people with implanted medical devices. So this includes uh, referring to implanting clinicians, making use of MR safety websites, assuming that it's not safe to scan the subject when there's doubt of MR compatibility of an implant, making a thorough risk assessment and checking that the implanted device are suitable for the particular MR environment when the MR equipment is replaced or upgraded. Uh, so there's a few different types of implanted medical devices. Some are active, that is those whose functionality depend on a source of energy or power. Some are non-active, which do not require a power source in order to function. Uh, so these can MR devices can be divided into like three categories. So some are MR safe, which pose, pose no known hazards resulting from exposure to any MR environment. Some are MR conditional, which is they're okay for an MR environment within def defined conditions. Some are MR, MR unsafe, which is that they pose unacceptable risk to the patient, medical staff, or any other persons within the MR environment. So if they're not labeled as MR safe, MR conditional, or MR unsafe, they're labeled as uh, MR unlabeled. And then in that case, they'll be regarded as MR unsafe. So types of non-active implants that fall under this category include orthopedic implants, artificial heart valves, miscellane, um, occlusive clips, intravascular stents, filters, and coils, transdermal patches, uh, tattoos, which contain iron oxide, and some makeup particularly associated with the eyes uh, because um, the metal particles in the makeup might generate heat due to induced currents and then cause burns uh, where they are. So with uh, active implants, the MHRA guidelines section 4.11.1.1 state that persons with heart pacemakers should not enter the MR environment unless the device is MR conditional and the MR operator has confirmed that all of the implant manufacturers stated conditions for safe operation are met. Um, there have been some cases where the presence of the implanted device was undetected, which means that the responsibility is on the referring clinician to identify those patients with implants and or contraindications before referral for examination. Uh, there may be um, a need to perform an MR examination when the manufacturer's guidance cannot be met, where the compatibility is unknown or the device is known to be MR unsafe. So in these cases, we need to make a risk assessment. We need to identify and implement precautions to minimize the risk. Uh, we need to make sure that a suitable clinician is available in the department at the time of the scan. Uh, and we should have procedures for post-scan evaluation of the patient. Uh, in terms of uh, active implants, many of these are regarded as contraindications for MR. So these incl include cochlear implants, brainstem implants, neurostimulators, and implanted drug infusion pumps. A uh, trained clinician and shunt programmer should be available when active implants are uh, going into the MR scanner. And the patient needs to be carefully advised on how to 
recognize over and under drainage in the case of programmable hydrocephalus pumps. So uh, there's also the case of the superconducting quench, which is done in order to switch off the static uh, magnetic field. So quenches can happen spontaneously. And uh, whether they happen spontaneously or not spontaneously, there's um, gaseous helium, which will displace the oxygen in the room with a danger of asphyxia. And the gases are also very cold. Uh, there's another danger that the gas may um, create a pressure in the room which will close the door to slam shut. So for this reason, recently installed systems usually have doors which open outwards. Um, in case of fire, firefighters uh, should be taken through the checklist or the static magnetic field should be turned off before they enter the controlled area. In case there are out-of-hours fire emergencies where MR authorized people are not uh, present in order to ensure that these steps are met. Uh, it may be good to inform the local fire department of what should be done in case there is a fire in the MR room. Um, all right, so that's the last of the fires, like the MR safety precautions and 